All right, it's been quite a while since I've actually put anything online. And that's mainly just because there's a lot of other things that have been going on in life. I've not really had time, but uh, what I wanted to show today was the I have just fitted this very simple USB socket. Mm -hmm. uh, really cheap. Uh, picked it up off of eBay for I think about eight pounds. Uh, <clears throat> and it comes with this sort of sticky cradle which is quite nice so I've decided to just mount that just underneath uh, above the bolts where the bolts come through um, I've seen a few people that have actually picked up a mount similar kind of thing where uh, you can uh, fit it to these bolts which is kind of a nice touch and I might look at that at a later time um, but <clears throat> the important thing that I wanted to kind of show was the wiring aspect of it. So what I've done is I've put it onto full lock the furthest end to make sure that there's enough slack coming through. Uh, I know this is difficult to see but all I've done is I've just very loosely put a tie wrap on this um, and I've not crimped it off or anything for the moment because I just want to make sure that it's got enough play and then I'm actually just running it I know it doesn't look particularly nice but I'm just running it underneath the air tank and it goes through. There's some bolts here which uh, strap the petrol tank down and it's going behind the post and then runs through here and then comes up following the same channel where the quick shifter cable and the power commander cables come through which runs along here up underneath the bracket up into here um, and then obviously onto the battery. It also comes with a fuse connected and it does come with a spare fuse and I think these these are so important with all of these additional accessories because uh, you know it's just helping with sort of managing the the unexpected load or the unintended load from the manufacturer it does mean the space for the uh, emergency pack is getting very tight because uh, in here I've now got the power commander um, I just grab my keys actually just to pop this off so running off of the battery now I've got power commander uh, is it down in there? Hello. the uh, HM quick shifter which has got the little control unit there for it this USB charger and then I've got a quick charge cable uh, reason why I'm about to hit on this little loop here so that's actually a quick charge adapter for my trickle charger so that I don't have to keep taking the seat off and with that I'm hoping that this is actually the last time that I will take the seat off unless there's something really dramatic that needs to be done because everything now is wired for sound so the reasons why I've done this then is because I'd quite like to do a little bit of traveling Hi, and uh, uh, I originally had a cigarette lighter adapter which I had on the Jixa uh, for the sat nav and I just thought that's really stupid why not just cut out the middleman and go straight for the USB socket I'm amazed that it's taken this long really for people to start doing those I've reinstalled the RAM mount into the yoke that is still a really crappy system I have to say, like I've still got spin. I have never been able to fit one of these where it has really locked in tight. But it's kind of okay. I'm used to it. I know what happens once I put the arm on with the sat nav case. It all just sort of swings to the bottom. That's not a problem. Um, the other thing is this really nice R1M uh, replica carbon fiber top which is by Lakamoto. So if you look through a couple of videos, uh, beginning of the summer, I guess it must have been, I had tried to install a pro fiber box and it was crap, uh, really, really crap quality, very disappointed in it. I've been reassured by Jester Trick Bits where I bought it from that that is a bit of an anomaly. Normally they're really good and I have, I have no doubt in my mind that that's true. Um, but for whatever reason, it, the one that they, they made up for me didn't come off of the mould properly. Um, this, however, 
just fit straight away, no problems at all, no issues with this nut which was one of the main problems and no issues with the points where it connects onto this back back piece. So that's cool. Um, and I think it does look quite nice, I think it, it, adds, it adds something to it, it's sort of making more of a follow of the black and the red. I think there's a possibility that I might do something with the fairings. You've got the grey fairings on the front and uh, I'm not entirely sure what yet. I like the fin being red, which is on the limited edition one from the same time, uh, but that's probably not going to happen. Oh, and I've also got the power bronze double bubble screen on there as well. Uh, so that's it. I uh, just wanted to really quickly show that it's, it's super simple. I did start taking this fairing off the side and I think I had the panel off obviously you've got the ECU is down here uh, so I thought you might be able to run through the channels but the channels are super super tight I mean it's impossible to see in here or no but where it actually comes out of the frame with the main wiring loom is is really really tight there's absolutely no way that you could sneak another cable into there without doing some extensive pulling and poking and I just really couldn't be bothered with that for something which is meant to be you know a fairly quick and simple hacky thing um, this was a lot easier and also if I find it causes any problems I've now got a really quick way of getting it off uh, so that's it um, you yeah, know I might potentially tie it tidy it up with some tie wraps um, or get some like little plastic uh, you know with 3m tape clips to sort of clip it back into the to the frame there but that's probably going to be it, really, really is it. I think there's, um, there's a limit to what I can be bothered to do. 